Hi, it's King Lizard, Xbox One, and Tom Clancy's The Division. And this is my walkthrough for the Queen's Tunnel Camp on hard difficulty. So you see here we've got a lot of purple enemies. Currently using this sniper rifle, it's about a 30k damage sniper rifle, this one I'm using. Bold action, five uh, pieces of ammo per mag, taking quite a bit of damage there. And these AI in these areas will take you down pretty quick, even if you're a level 30 like me. So you do need to use your cover and sort of play the game intelligently. Now there are lots of turrets in this particular mission, so you do need to do your best to find safe routes around the turrets in order to avoid being taken down quickly by the turrets. Now I don't know if you saw there back there on the left, there was one of those electrical kind of mines. They will kind of just stall you. They do a little bit of damage, but nothing too major. I was hoping there was a little way through there. On the inside there isn't, so I'm just sneak right up against this barrier. This is a good way of getting safely around this area. Oh, sniper got away from me, he's grenading on me. Let's give this guy something to play with up there. See if he jumps down or stands up there and gets killed. If he's smart, he's going to jump out. Yeah, that's quite good AI. He, he basically backed out of that area there and legged it. Colleague took out the other sniper for me there. Now all that's left to do is to turn off this turret. Turning off the turret's pretty easy. There's basically just a console on the back of most of them or alongside them. It's a matter of just finding them in the mission. This one's quite simple because it is literally just on the rear of the turret. So we're all safe here. Now into the next area. And we've got another turret in the distance there. You can see that on the right side. We've got level 30 superior enemy here. All of my weapons are superior weapons that I've got equipped at the moment. I've got a SGS shotgun there, which is an automatic shotgun. And got my turret out, which is a flame turret. That'll stall him a little bit. Let him take some damage, get his shield off. And obviously the white markings on these enemies, their shield, once you clear that off, you can kill them pretty swiftly with these weapons that I'm using anyway. So it's all about getting their shields down and then finishing them off. Managed to get a nice headshot there with the shotgun close quarters. They're coming in again. As I was saying earlier, these guys really will get in your face quite quickly. Going for my colleague there. He totally ignored me, which I'm not going to complain about. <laughs> More heat he gets, the better. Easier life I get. So, get myself in cover. I'm going to head for that juggernaut there. I'm going to go down the side of it. Oh, that was close. I didn't get hit there. I'm definitely not going that way because that's insta-death, I'm sure. So I'm going to go down this left side. Get the shotgun out. Keep the shotgun out so that I've got some close quarter killing damage. It's going to take things out pretty swift. That guy hasn't got much life left anyway. So I'm going to finish him off so that I can go and turn this turret off. Oh, reload. Excellent. Shot in the face, finish him off. Careful, they don't notice you before you and let's go and turn this turret off so my partner in crime can make his way down to where I am. So again, back of the console of the turret. Nice easy switch off there. You can go the front way around it, although it's a hell of a lot more dangerous. You can get in front of the turret, but as I said, you, you are pretty prone to going down a lot more often than you would taking that left side route around the juggernaut. But I know it's possible because I did do it the first time when I played through this on normal mode. I went through the turret. Probably not such a good idea on hard because you will literally go down after a couple of hits from that thing. Just grabbing some of those baggies there. Nothing special. Just hopefully a few grenades and stuff just to re-equip my stock or my backpack. And then in we go. Now the thing I found with um, Division, this area is quite populated as well actually. Probably would have been better off with a shotgun there. I thought I had my shotgun out, I didn't. I had my sniper rifle out, it's not good. But this area is quite a um, populated area with enemy, they're quite tough here. But the thing I'm finding with the Division at the moment is I'm kind of running out of things to do. Obviously there's an update due in April, but then after that there's not many updates coming out for quite some time from what I understand. and. I think the problem with that is the danger is the game is just 
kind of going to go stale. You can get Phoenix credits and stuff, but there's only so much you really want to do to try and get better weapons. My first visit to the Dark Zone actually saw me get some pretty decent weapons compared to what I had from the, you know, the main game. However, since that visit, I haven't had anything that's really any good of any nature in any of the, you know, the specific slots for your character. So I've had no particularly decent armor, no knee pads, no, you know, no gloves no new weapons that are any better than the ones I already have and yeah I don't know I'm just a bit disappointed it seems to be very Destiny-esque in terms of its drops and kind of dropping in useless gear that you know is only really good for breaking down or selling so unfortunately initially I had good hopes for it because you know the first time I was in DZ I was in there for a couple of hours came out some really good good gear. I had quite a good time in there. It's real tough in the DZ, uh, the Dark Zone. But um, since then, I just haven't been rewarded. You know, everything that I've got from there has been you know, pretty crap compared to what I already have. So, nice bit of superior gear there from this guy. It won't be any higher than what I've already got, that's for sure. And now we've got to go up that ladder on the back of the building. I'm just going to have a quick peek. Let's make sure there's no enemies lying around. No, it's those guys up there. So I'm going to go up the ladder now, and we've got some sort of close quarters um, yellow guy up there. He's a tech or an engineer. So he can put up his own turrets and stuff. So we've got to take this guy down swiftly and carefully. This guy will punish us in a big way, give him the chance. So you really want to play this guy cautiously, take him down bit by bit, get some damage in from a distance, get his shield off. Once his shield off, he's as you know, exposed as any other enemy, he's going to go down pretty quick. But it's all in getting that shield off. Now this sniper rifle was a rifle that I actually um, acquired in the Dark Zone. And since getting this sniper rifle, I've not had anything better or another sniper rifle for that matter. I've not actually received any other sniper rifle since my visit to the Dark Zone the first time. I do seem to get a lot of um, shotguns and a lot of assault rifles, but again, like I said, they're very rarely anything better than what I already have. So it's you know it gets a little bit tedious when you you know you keep doing the same thing over and over and not getting much in the way of reward. In terms of single player content, there's actually a lot to do here. Um, so again, as I said earlier, some of the stuff is a bit repetitive. It's quite similar in terms of the, you know it's how you strategically do it or how you do it. There are different areas you'll do the missions in, so you won't always be able to approach them in the same manner. You'll have to use different tactics and stuff. You'll meet come up against harder and harder enemy the further into the game story mode you get. And that will obviously keep the challenge ticking over and keep you interested. It's you know for me I've played around about thirty hours of this now and I'll be honest I haven't just done the story mode. I've been you know, messing around, walking around areas, just looking for things in general. Okay, so we just set that console off. We're going to go back down the ladder now and onto the next area, which is going to be interesting. But, you know, single player game wise, this is a really good game. For me, it's an 8 out of 10 title for single player at least because there is just so much to do. You could argue that some of it's quite repetitive in what you're doing, although there are different areas on the map, and it is a reasonably large size map. Um, that was one of my biggest fears buying this game, was how big was the area going to be that we're playing. But it's actually a respectable size, and the DZ is also quite a considerable size as well, and you will get different challenges and different enemy, obviously a lot harder enemy in the DZ, given that that is geared more towards co-op play. So we're coming up on another turret now. This one actually has a console just in front of it to the right side. So if you can see that Hummer there behind this guy I'm shooting, the actual control panel to switch off the turret is behind the Hummer. So we've got to get away there and turn that thing off in order to get through this particular checkpoint. Look at that guy with the toasting. He's a bit medium rare there. Make sure I'm not being snuck up on. So far so good. 
Barbie guy off. Another, another one on the Barbie. And go for more of the same on this chap. He's out of there. And the sniper does really suit this particular level quite well because it's high damage and also you can take enemies out at a distance and quite a lot of the levels or areas in this particular mission Queen's Tunnel Camp um, you know there are a lot of distance based enemies that allow you to get shots on them from afar so there's that turret, let me switch that turret off there so it's safe to move on by okay so into the tunnel we go, I do a quick cut there where I basically just cut out a section of the game, probably about a minute, where we're just kind of going up and down various tunnel walkways and in rooms, picking up goodies. There are a few collectible crates in there where you can pick up some goodies from. So if you're playing the game first time round and you're building up your levels, obviously it's wise to look for all those crates because those crates may just well have something decent for you. So I was just waiting for my colleague there before we set things off in this room get my flamethrower turret out there is actually an enemy turret there in the middle I'm not sure where I turn that off to be honest it might have been in that office back there I'm just going to go ahead anyway we can avoid the fire from that just by being smart and kind of sticking to the outskirts give that guy a grenade to play with not a lab in the middle of the map not quite what I planned Let's snipe this guy out from a distance he'll stick his head out kindly for me bit of damage on him there. Now to the right of me there is a door and that doorway, or behind me now, is going to spawn a whole bunch of new enemies. So you don't want to be too far at the back of this room, otherwise you will pretty much get inundated with enemy and unless you've got some extremely good weapons that instantly down enemy, you're going to be going down pretty quickly. And if you're playing it single, obviously that's not a whole lot of fun. I have done this solo hard. I chose to put this co-op version on because the co-op version is just that little bit quicker from a playthrough perspective. So taking down these LMB guys here. All of them are what are known as superior enemies. So all these guys have got the uh, purple life bars with the white bars on top to represent their shields. So obviously you've got to work the shields off as usual and then finish the guy off. Now that's the door there to my right I'm talking about. That's where enemy do come from. Got some enemy back here still. Get the shotgun on this case. This SGS shotgun of mine is a 42k damage shotgun so it's pretty respectable damage from a gun perspective. And it is reasonably effective at quite a distance you know a good kind of say five meters away after that it tends to get not effective at all but you do need quite close range you know CQB as you would with most shotguns to get some pretty good damage on the enemy but it's also great for firing um, from cover as well it will do some pretty good damage from cover if you're just aiming at the enemy and you know I do use the from cover shooting quite a lot in this game because it can get pretty crazy. The snipers at this level are just absolutely brutal and you cannot afford to stick your head out for too long otherwise you'll just go down. So using those shotguns when people are rushing you and you're behind a crate is you know just the perfect way of taking them downward without sticking your head out and getting shot by the e.g. the enemy running in with shotguns but also the enemy sniping at you from a distance. So, onto the console, we set this console off, it's going to open up that grate right there in front of me and then we can get up that escalator into the next area. There we go. You'll hear a mechanical noise in a few moments, and that's the great lifting up. So up we go. Here's a thing. And then right into the final area of this mission. Door, now this area is pretty busy. Back. It's so also pretty back. nasty. I did actually find back. somewhere high I didn't realise was there um, on my last playthrough. And actually from the higher point in this particular mission it's a lot easier to get through this mission down here on the ground where I am now is pretty tricky you do get a lot of enemy and they are from a number of different positions around the map so it's actually quite hard to get cover from the enemy 
because there's just so many of them coming in from various directions. Now in a minute I'll show you my little hideout that I found, which is quite a good place to, you know, get this mission done if you like. I was trying to shoot that canister there, it's too late now. He managed to get away from me. Taking a bit of damage here, quick reheal. Got my pistol out at the moment, trying to get some damage on this guy. Trying to get my shotgun reloaded. Come on. Close quarters, that got rid of him. Get a bit of flak here. Get myself in cover. Finish this guy off. Excellent. Got my pistol out just to finish him off. Some cloves there, nothing too exciting, and a bit of hammer. Hopefully we get a grenade from that little baggy. I'm going to have a quick run around the level, make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. Another baggy where I might get some grenades of some sort. And then back to the back area of the map and this ladder. Now this ladder will take us up to the next level, kind of like a mezzanine above. And from here, it's not too bad a place to defend. You will get enemy come up the ladders on you as well. They're, you know, they're not by any means passive or predictable enemy. The enemy will try and crossfire you and they'll also try and sneak up on you when you least expect it. So you do kind of have to have um, ice in the back of your head if you like. So I've sent my colleague down there to set off the next part of the mission. Here they come. So all those little orange diamonds are all the enemy points from where they're going to be coming from. I've got my sniper at the ready and my shotgun for backup for close quarters. So the LMB soldiers come in now. We will get a big guy in here as well, so one of those high-end enemies. Someone took a shot at me then from down below. Oh, does help if I actually hit him. Let's give him a fire turret to play with that. Some damage on this guy, one more and he's out. Excellent, nice headshot. There we go. So the enemy's already come up the stairs. Just managed to finish him off. The shots my colleague was firing, I think he's using a sniper as well. And we got can't get a great shot on anything directly below there. We'll get a shot on that guy for sure. Does help I have my sniper rifle on there. I'm not really hitting him from there with a shot there. There's a sniper up high to the left there, look, that was that flash of light, that did some pretty good damage to me. So I do have to watch those guys as well, my colleague's cowering from sniper fire as well. He's going to try and get a grenade in there so I can get some shots on this sniper as it sticks its head up. I do like the way they're sort of, they're sort of that mild destruction around the window there as my colleague's shooting in on that uh, enemy. That's pretty cool. Got the grenade in. Excellent. Two shots and he's out. Now there is another sniper in there, I'm certain. There's normally two of them. I don't think we've got the second one yet. Let's see if we can finish him off. Excellent. Another headshot. I'm going to go around there, I think. Get up close and personal with these guys. Take them out. Oh, no, my colleague's back. He said we've got some shots on them, so I'm going to take those shots from here. No point risking life and limb for no reason. I'm getting shot from the left here. A little bit. Come back. Finish him off. He's been a bit cheeky. He was climbing up the crates in the middle. I'm going to wake my way round to my colleague now. We're going to do some defence from this area. And we still will get enemy respawns at this point. It's not, it's far from over yet. Quite a few enemy to take out still, plus the big guy is now going to be coming in. The main guy that we need to take down, e.g. the high-end enemy. Oh, it's gotten pretty busy here. don't ever remember getting that kind of spawn there of enemy. There's a mass spawn of enemy, including a high-end there. That's getting us into trouble. I need some help, quick. My colleague is, is always oh, down. Assistance. Crap. And he's crawling. He's. I don't 
I can get up there without dying. That's the problem. If I die, it's mission over, and we've got to start all over. My <laughs> colleague's body just slid off the top. Oh no! Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. Really, it was quite funny the way he dropped down there. Let's get myself up the ladder. Grab a little bit of ammo. Just want to see what was up here. If there's any enemy, I got to pick my colleague up. He's on the gr actually he's on the ground, but I think that ring above is what I need. Yeah, I'm gonna need to get the ring above so my colleague's on the floor, but the ring is above him, so I need to do the revive on the ring. It's gonna take a while because he's dead. You can revive people just in case you didn't know. In when you're playing the single player type co-op, you can't do it in the DZ, which is a little frustrating because that's where it really would be a little bit more. Um, what's the word? of benefit if you like. So if your colleagues are dead dead you can revive them, it just takes a lot longer. Alright, turret out. Oh no I threw it down the gap. Go! Oh! Should have should have should have just held on to it. It wasn't gonna make the throw area there. Didn't quite have the uh, throw strength to get it all the way across. So there's our high-end guy in the middle, he's going to take some shooting, that guy. Colleague's back over there, trying to draw off enemy. Trying to get some shots on these high-end guys. Oh, that was a nice shot, that did some big damage on him. Took his shield out almost. i can get another one of those on this guy, this sniper. Sniper's probably our biggest threats at the moment. These guys, as I said, do some serious damage. So you really want to try and pin those snipers down first. And also, try and get the smaller enemy out of the way. Oh, big damage then. Big damage. But you really want to get the smaller enemy out of the way so you can focus on the main guy, the big guy. Okay. We've got quite a lot of enemy around still at the moment. Colleague chucked a grenade in. Got some extra damage on that guy, working those shields off. Chuck my turret out. This time it lands over there. Excellent. But this time hopefully it will be of some use. Now there's a turret out there, so we've got the engineer. That is the one of the uh, high-end guys that are putting up those turrets. Which is a pain, because they do some pretty good damage too. And then back in on these yellows. Take these guys out. There's our primary guy there. So we're just down to him now. And Snipers do reasonable damage to his shield. We're going to be getting into his standard health now. Once we get into his health, he's down and out. So it's pretty much going to be mission over very shortly. So I'll take this opportunity to thank you guys and gals for watching. I will be back with plenty more Division. I've got lots of vids I've got to process. Plus, plenty of other gaming greats on King Liz's Game Lounge. Please take the time to rate the video. If you're not a subscriber, don't be shy, feel free to click that sub button anytime and support King Liz's game out. Take care, keep well, and keep Good watching. Job, agent. They're still doing the tally, but the weapons you secured should keep the JTF in the field for a long time. That's how you do it. You just kick the leg out from under these LMB mooks. Keep it up, and they're going down. Alright, let's secure this side ASAP. Tran, give me an